you know, it's interesting. I, uh, I, I'm doing our master class events uh, across the North America right now, and uh, I'm doing a section on It's a Good Life, and I begin it off with a whole bunch of things that didn't go wrong, uh, that went wrong for me, uh, from my motorcycle accident to my house burning down to a business venture that went sideways to all these different things I did and difficulties I experienced. And out of those things came the good. Out of those things came the making of me. Uh, and people can relate to it. And one example of that is um, I might have been 15 or 17 years into the coaching business. And again, our business, we don't produce widgets or, or a product or whatever. We change people's lives. That's what coaching does. A coach is, is a vehicle that takes someone from one place to another. And our coaches take people from one place in their life to another. And we're at it 26 years. And we have thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of these people who changed their business, changed their life, and they're extremely thankful to us. And they're very loyal and very enthusiastic. And yet, um, so one year I decided, uh, along with my brothers, to run the San Diego Marathon. And I decided to take my clients on the journey because I, I, a man I've interviewed on this podcast, uh, Hal Higdon, he developed this really cool system on how to run half marathons and full marathons in very bite-sized, digestible processes. So I'm working this way, I'm doing this, and I'm taking my clients on this journey. And a week before the marathon, after six months of training, I tear my hamstring playing the company softball game. I mean, like tear it like it's a ball of jelly behind my kneecap. It took a very long time to recover. And I cannot tell, the notes I got at that time were the most strange and informative notes I ever got. And I, I get a lot of mail, thousands of pieces of mail and email every month. But these were different than anything I'd ever received. And these were all from people who'd been blessed by the work I'd done and the work the company had done. And they went like this. Uh, Brian, so sorry to hear you, you tore your hamstring. Uh, but I just want you to know that it's kind of encouraging for me that sometimes you don't get to reach your goals also. Uh, Brian, I know you worked very hard for this, but I've been working hard on something for quite some time, and it hasn't happened for me yet. And when someone as successful as you has this happen, it's really encouraging. Now, this is, okay, that's interesting. And then another one, then another one, then another one. Now, I, well, I got to be honest, once I was kind of pissed off, I'm like, hang on a second here. I've been busting my hump for years to help these folks and give them every piece of wisdom and insight, built this company that could help them at every hand's turn, do everything we could for them. And yet, what I learned from it was that people can identify with the success, but they can identify with the struggle. And so these very, very things that we're talking about, whether they're setbacks, disappointments, or mistakes and failures we experience ourselves, it, it gives us greater compassion, it gives us greater empathy, it gives us greater experience, and it makes us so much more impactful as a human being because we can relate to more people. We can relate to more people. We can genuinely help more people because we've been there, done that. We've suffered with them, we understand it, and we can help them. And so there's, there's power in it all. So we want to be like a Timex, right?